Hey there, friends. It's Kristen here, and we've got a new episode of Free Spirit Feeding that will start in about one minute. Just as you're joining us, say hello. Tell us where you're watching us from. We're streaming right now on the Softlex Company Facebook page and YouTube channel. Hello, hello. Hi, Gail and Lydia, Sue, Beverly from Atlanta, Zach in Michigan. Oh, Cynthia from New York City, Randy in Ohio. Hi, Diane. Great to see everybody. I was gonna wear my flower crown today, but it didn't quite match with my pink and red that I have on. So I'll have to, have to make myself another one. It was pretty funny, actually. I wore that flower crown we made last Monday. So we made the very peri flower crown last Monday. I wore it all day on Monday after we made it together on the video. And no one in my family even said anything. <laughs> I wore it to pick my teenager up from school, then I came home, and then I just wore it the whole rest of the day, cooking dinner and just kind of hanging out. And yeah, neither neither of my kids nor my husband said anything about it. They weren't like, what's on your head? What do you... So when I, when I asked my oldest about it, he laughed and he said, I guess we just didn't think there was anything strange about it. It just... It just it just was, that's just mom. She's just wearing a flower crown today. <laughs> no need to, no need to say anything. It's so funny. Lots of new people joining us. Janine from Tennessee, Spidey from California, Eureka, California, Rachel from Illinois, Brooke, hello from Detroit. Hi, Gloria. Hi, Becky. Kim's saying hi from North Carolina. Hey, Thomas. What are you doing on here? Thomas is actually off work today. You're popping in to say hello. And Cynthia just got a box from Softlex. Something wonderful is on its way. I just like all of you get excited when I see those emails. Do you like that that we have that as like our little subject? Something wonderful from Softflex Company is on its way. Well, I hope you got something wonderful today, Cynthia. Hi, Brooke. I love that. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> Absolutely love it. Yep. Nobody's wondering. Nobody's wondering why mom's wearing a flower crown all day. <laughs> oh, the Parisian has arrived just in time. Brooks Rainbow arrives tomorrow. Yeah, so you guys didn't see, we dropped our newest kit last Wednesday and it is rainbow-tastic. So if you are a lover of rainbows, like so many of us are, this is going to be your kit. It is got, it's just really a lot of fun. There's some really interesting items in there, stuff that's very different than what we've done in our um, other design kits. For example, we will not have a Jesse James beads bead mix in that design kit because we curated a few other things and, um, and put them in there, but you can get the bead mix separately. We still created a wonderful love is love just james beads rainbow bead mix um and if you shop this week through tomorrow which is may 3rd 
uh, at midnight and you spend $55 or more, you will get that rainbow bead mix free added to your order. We also have a bead strand. So a rainbow bead strand is also available to pick up. And pretty much if you were to get the kit and the strand, you probably just need to add a few other things um, to get to that $55 to get the free bead mix. Of course, you'll probably need crimps. You can pick up extra things like clasps and crimps and ear wires and things like that, that you always kind of have that around. Um, so yeah, we're really excited about that. Rainbow Tastic, and they are selling fast. We're about 60% sold out. We haven't even had it online for a week. So they are moving really quickly. And I think we're down to like 30 of the bead mixes. And once those are gone, they're gone. Um, and if they sell out before the end of tomorrow, then you won't even get the, the deal. So um, go over there at softflexcompany.com and check it out as soon as you are able. Yeah, Zach says they already know you're a flower goddess. They do. <laughs> they do. Uh, they do. So they didn't really think anything was strange. I mean, I, you know, wearing a flower crown around the house and stuff is one thing, but I don't usually leave the house that often with something like that in my hair. So I thought that that was kind of funny that nobody um, thought it was strange that I was just running my errands. I was going to the store. I think I went to the grocery store. <laughs> things like that. And uh, yeah, flower crown makes everything more fun. You just feel a little extra magical. <laughs> Sue says, that's why I order my kit when Sarah reveals it. Yeah. Um, Cause they do, they do go fast. They do definitely go fast. Let's see if I missed anybody else. Oh, Pam got her rainbow today in Wisconsin. Awesome. Rachel said I would have gotten some looks of craziness if I had a flower crown on my head, for sure. You know, maybe I was getting looks and I just didn't realize. That's always possible. <laughs> but within my own family, nobody seemed to uh, have even realized that I had anything going on. Yes, Brooke says, I had to get it once I heard that Sam provided the beads. Yes, we have a special bead mix in there from Sam's Bead Shop. Um, so pretty excited we also have some goodies i mean i don't want to like give anything away uh because it is a mystery kit but from a few of our other fellow um special companies that we work with we have a few other goodies in there as well so some new things uh some stuff you may have not seen before so I'm pretty excited about that hey nancy welcome welcome Uh, Thomas likes to jump in and see what we're making. Oh, Gloria just got her pop out wood and ink order. Yes, you know, I'm going to be playing with some paint in the rainbow kit. So once we get the rainbow kit going um, at the end of June, I'll be busting out my paints for some stuff in there. I already have an idea for something and I have some of the new pop outs coming too. So I plan to do another pop out video. Um, real soon. So much no stuff. It's new stuff. Gail got her rainbow kit and it's so pretty. All right. So today we're talking about the Parisian couture kit, which is what I have going on on my desk right here. The exception of this bracelet. Um, this one is the one that we launched at the end. No, at the, yeah, the end of March. Right, we revealed it the end of April. So this one has sold out. And, uh, but this is an idea of some, some of the things you get in our kits. And since a lot of you have the Parisian kit, I'm gonna make something with it today. Um, before I get started on that, I do wanna talk about beads and blooms. And I got my beads and blooms pack here. Oh my gosh, this is put on by our friends at Jesse James Beads Company. And it's going to kick off, I think Thursday this week. We, Sarah and I are beading together for a tutorial on Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And there's so much stuff in here. Oh my gosh, so much. I'm gonna be working with this, um, beautiful strand here and we're going to do, oh, let me hold it up. 
I'll hold it up here first. We're gonna do this knotted soft flex wire and Jesse James beads bracelet together. And then Sarah has a really cool butterfly necklace that she worked on. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. That's this week. Kicks off, I think, on Thursday. You'll have to have bought this kit from Jesse James Beads um, to be involved. And you'll see Sarah and I, if you did get the kit, you'll see Sarah and I on Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And if you missed that, we are doing another uh, collaboration with Jesse James Beads called the Summer Pool Party Jewelry Making Kit. And you can grab that kit out over at Softlex Company right now. We just launched that on Wednesday. You grab this supply kit from us at Softlex Company, and then you go grab your bead kit from Jesse James Beads to complement one another. And then we do... Um, some tutorials with you. It's a two day event with four different designers. So all the details are in that, that product over at softlexcompany.com. I believe the, the event date is June, June 2nd and 3rd, I think. Oh, Gail got her Beats and Blooms kit today too. So, I mean, it was jam packed in there and yeah, so many pretties. So much stuff going on, of course. Let's go ahead and switch switch views here. So here's a close up of that bracelet I'm gonna be doing. It's got like a square knot in between. So you see this design kind of similar with um, cords and leathers, but here we're just doing it with soft flex in the pink beading wire. It gives it like an interesting little pop of texture and bright color to that strand. So this is everything here that was included in the Parisian Couture design kit. We've got, I'll open up this one last, but we've got four beautiful strands of check glass beads. These lovely twisted diamonds in this really soft, pretty, pink. I think Sarah already did a pair of earrings with uh, this particular strand over on the Softlex Company Instagram and TikTok pages. Then we've got these. I think these are called like, they're like a cathedral cut, but they're a little, oh, they're turbine. They are a turbine cut. So they are, they're pretty true red. I think they're coming up a little orange on the screen, but they are true red with some gold on the sides. Happy Free Spirit Beating Monday, Marisol. Thank you. Love that. Here's another wonderful strand. This is a strand of two whole beads, little squares. These are always fun to play with. We actually haven't had these in a kit in a while. Um, so they're very soft, pale pink color. And I've already seen quite a few of you using these in um, really lovely designs over in the Softlex VIB Studio group, which is our free Facebook group where you can share what you're working on and get inspired by what other people are working on with our kits and our products and all of that good stuff. And then here's a super sweet, oh gosh, I don't know what size these are. Let me see if I have, see if I have my kit document. Cause it's, they're teeny tiny and adorable. Sometimes we have the sizes on here, sometimes we don't, it just depends. Oh, they're three millimeter. So they are a three millimeter cream glass pearl. They're really sweet and I definitely plan to work with these, I think today. So these were gathered exclusively for Softlex Company um, for the kit, so you can't get them any other way. They were in the kit, design kit, and now that's totally sold out. However, you can still get the bead mix. We had a Jesse James bead mix, the Parisian Couture, that was put into the design kit, and we have a handful of these still available. So I'm gonna open this up, and this is something that you can still get 
while supplies last. And then we had a Softlex red coral color, 10 foot spool of our medium diameter in the kit. And then we also have a Parisian Couture Trios, which is a three pack. And it's got the red, the pink rhodochrosite and, um, and black, I think. So it's a lovely trio. Whoa, such sparkle in here. So with these bead mixes, they're made exclusively for Softlex Company for our design kits and the and what theme we have going on. And for Jesse James Beats, they usually put um, pairs in the mix. So you'll either get two or four or six or eight of something. It makes it really nice to design with. There's two of those. Two of these lovely red glass faceted rondelles. These have got some crazy sparkle. I always get drawn to these for some reason, uh, but they're extra stunning in the black. I feel like they look like a sequence kind of dress. These are some large opalite bicones in this creamy, creamy white. And here we got some pink with a little bit of an AB, not really AB, but just like a little bit of something on there. Maybe a little opal. That's probably what it is, like an opal finish. Yeah, Becky says, love those black ones, right? Doesn't that look like you're wearing like one of those sequins black dresses? Disco age. It looks like we got one of these focal beads. Lovely. Two red roses. I love to make rose rings with these. So if you um, if you got these roses and you don't know what to do with them, check our YouTube channel and search rose ring and you should get the tutorial I already did with these and the craft wire. And I don't have any rose rings at the moment. I had given them all away. So I might have to make some more. I saw someone in the VIB group do a pair of earrings with these two with the little bows at the bottom. Oh, they were so cute. There's some teardrops. So what do you think of this red, pink, and black combination? So French, right? Um, I've been watching that show, Emily in Paris. Have you guys seen that? And it's on, it's over on Netflix. And she wears a lot of white and red or red and pink. So we were inspired by that. And then there's another, I don't know if it was a movie that's coming out soon that we were also inspired by. Um, we were looking at some trailers for it, but I don't know if I, I don't know if I recall if it actually released when they thought it was going to, because I haven't heard anything about it. So we got these little rondelles. I love the office that Emily in Paris that she works in. I love, I love all of her coworkers. They crack me up. <laughs> and these are really neat. They are black, but they give off this little bit of a blue sheen with the light because of the facets. And they are a very um, 
unique cut shape, like a nugget. And then we've got some of these black rondelles to match with the white. And we've got a few silver components. We've got these sweet little flowers, two of those. These diamonds, we've got four of those. And I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do today. I have an idea in my head that I haven't really worked it out. These little rhinestone beads, we've got, oh, we have three of those. And then a bunch of these pretty flower little bead caps. Let's see if I can get it with this light, there we go. Like a little daisy or flower bead cap. So we got one, two, got a bunch of those. And then lastly, you've got your little finding pack. So we've got some two by two millimeter soft flex crimp tubes in sterling silver. And we've got a lobster clasp and ear wires. So those kind of things are always included. And we have this sweet wee charm. That is from our friends over at Vintage, as well as the Eiffel Tower charm. And these adorable little bows. Oh my gosh, these are so cute. And these are from Tierra Cast, from our friends at Tierra Cast. So, there you have it. There's our entire kit package opened up for you. And I know I want to use this, as you guys probably saw in the title. Say we. I know that this light is making it difficult for that to, there we go, kind of show up there. So I do want to use that for sure. And I do want to use these sweet little pearls for sure. For sure, for sure. Um, as far as some of the other things, I'm going to take out some of the bigger items for the moment and look at what I've got in the more dainty, dainty beads. I'll save those bigger ones, I think, for something, something else. Maybe I'll keep those. Oh, I don't have any red, and I'm going to need red, actually. So... Do I want to bring red in with the teardrops? Or with the turbines? Let's see. So this is what I'm thinking. I have a little sketch here. I was thinking of doing the little... Um, pearls kind of at the top and then doing a, a little pendant necklace with the we oui. say we oui, which means yes in French and um, as a way to say yes to every day right and then this one I was thinking maybe the Eiffel Tower in the middle maybe the Eiffel Tower at the end I don't know that was sort of my my idea, my sketch idea. I don't think I'm going to use the bows on this design, but man, they're cute and I love them. So 
So this is obviously too small a strand to go around your entire neck. So you can do a few different things. You can do just pearls in the front and then we can crimp it and leave the red strand behind and then have another red strand coming down which might be what I do. Um, the other option is to add some things in there. But I'm thinking, I'm, I kind of feel like I just want the front part to be pearls, but maybe I'll take a few pearls to add into the second, the second layer. Hmm, I know I want red, or I could just let the red be the wire. That's possible too. Let's cut this one. I wonder if I had one of these roll away. I feel like I'm, I feel like I had six. There's always one bead that gets away. There's one escape artist, right? I don't think I've ever sat down to a beading session where I didn't have at least one bead take off. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> so maybe the red will just come in from the wire. I know, I do love the black together too. I'm kind of a sucker for the red and the pink. Maybe I'll take these out and add in the black because I do like the black. just sort of making a little bit of possibility. Maybe they'll go in between. All right, well, right now I'm gonna work from my spool and I'm just gonna start stringing these, these little itty bitty pearls. And hopefully they string up okay. I didn't even check. They do, they do, they do. Becky loves the red and the black together. Marisol says, runaway bead. I know, it's true. They always go. And Lydia says, beads love to be on the floor. I mean, they really, it's like that's their goal. It's like that's their main goal in life, right? How do I get to the floor? <laughs> How do I How do I get down there? So when I when I saw this um, little charm and I thought about wearing the word yes on a piece of jewelry, it kind of reminded me from when my kids were little, when they were like, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to say it, if they were toddler, maybe a little older than like preschool age, I guess. And when they're preschool age, when they're that young age, I remember like, I just felt like I said no all the time. Like I was just like, no, 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 can't do that. Nope, can't do that. Nope, nope, nope. And I read in one of my gazillion parenting books to have a day of yes. And I thought that was so fun. And so there would be some days where I would say, okay, 
today is a day of yes. And I wouldn't tell them that they didn't know because, you know, that could go awry. <laughs> they can't be, they can't have that kind of information. <laughs> but I knew that, okay, today is the day that I am going to try and say yes to as many things as I can. And it was always so, such a, such a nice day you know play play this game with me yes can we get ice cream yes can we you know so everything was obviously within reason i mean they there are things that i couldn't say yes to just because but for the most part if it was a simple and easy yes um then i would say yes and i thought about how fun would that be as an adult to give yourself a say yes day and you just kind of say yes to yourself. Do I wanna have that cup of coffee from my favorite coffee shop this morning? Yes, yes I do. Do I wanna go for a walk? Yes, yes I do. <laughs> so maybe this necklace wearing yes, I can say yes to all the things and just have fun with it. Chris says her cat always shows her where or him where they roll, roll to. Your beads, huh? Your cat is always hunting them down for you and giving you a little uh, idea of where they are. That's helpful. I don't have a cat, I have dogs and Dogs really can't be bothered, in my opinion, anyway, from my dogs. They really can't be bothered <laughs> with the whole bead situation. They don't come and check it out. They sometimes show up in my office um, when I'm on video because they hear me talking and they're like, what's she doing in there? But otherwise, they really don't. Becky says, I can't pick up a bead without dropping it. My mom gave me a shaker full of seed beads this morning. I poured a few in my hand and then lost one on the floor. Yeah, a shaker bead thing of seed beads. That just sounds like a recipe for beads flying all over, huh? It's like they're confetti. Marisol's cats love to find beads, help beads find their way to the floor. Oh, so you have a cat helping in the opposite way. <laughs> They're like, hey, I'll help the beads out and get them to the floor. I really should have strung this part before, before the video because it's just like itty bitty work. Lydia is asking, did you see the Yes Day movie? I don't think I did. Is there a movie where they have to say yes to everything all day? <laughs> oh, Becky said it's a garlic salt shaker. <laughs> I actually have two, two spice containers, shakers downstairs that, um, I washed out and was gonna bring up into my art room for something. I didn't think about putting beads in there, but hey, that's a fun way to not have to, if you put a mix of beads in there, all the same size, of course, but to just sort of randomly choose by shaking them out. <laughs> that's funny. Yes, it's on Netflix with Jennifer Garner. Oh, I'll have to go take a look at the yes day. Was it her that had to say yes all day? <laughs> was it or was it someone else in the movie? It's almost kind of like, um, what is that movie with Jim Carrey where he can't tell a lie all day? <laughs> but in that case, he's just like forced. He has no other option. This is a little more uh, 
a little softer. You don't, you're not forced to say yes, but it can be a nice reminder to say yes, right? Say yes to ourselves. Her and her two kids, cute, cute. I mean, when they're little, my kids used to ask for like such simple things, right? Can we go to the park or can we play a game or can we, you know? So it was just one of those days where as a parent, you have so many things to do and so many responsibilities. And I look back now, like they say, the, the days are long, the years are short. So now that they're both teens and one of them is graduating high school and all that stuff, you know, they're not asking, they're not asking us to do very much with them these days. Liar, liar. Yep, that was the that was that was the movie. <laughs> such a such an interesting premise. These are going to be just so sweet, just on their own, with the red sticking out. I like it. I mean, I know I'm not doing anything spectacular at the moment. I'm just stringing, but. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for being here. I haven't decided if I should connect them or make them two separate necklaces. What do you think? Should they be one necklace with two strands or, or should I let them be separate? Has anyone here ever been to Paris? I've never been to Paris. Curious to know. Oh, and how many should I leave off? Maybe I'll stop here. Does this feel like enough? Just a couple more. Lydia says, one necklace, two strands. Cynthia says, yes. What are you saying yes to? Have you been to Paris? Is that what you're saying yes to? Someday. I've never been to Europe at all. So someday that will be in the cards. All right, so I think what I'll do if I add the other strand is I'll just crimp it on maybe here. I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to cut some wire off and take a, take a gander at how I want to attach the second strand. Cynthia says, yes to Paris. Oh, that's so nice. Okay, so there's the first strand. Now I need a little, I don't think we have jump rings, right? So I need to make myself a little jump ring or add a jump ring for my charm. I didn't pull any of those out yet. Let's see. There we go. So when you add a jump ring, you're just gonna use two pliers 
a bent nose and a chain nose or two chain nose. And you're gonna hold it on the, on the sides of where it's split and just twist it open. Oh, that was a split ring I got. That's not a jump ring. I was like, why isn't that opening up? Well, because it was a split ring. This one's already open. So just slide that on and then using my pliers, twist that close. Oh, I don't have two bent nose. <laughs> Two bent nose suggestion, that would be helpful. I only own one bent nose and I actually only got it recently. It's kind of a new to me tool. Stargazer says she's been to Paris many years ago, worked two summers so I could go to Europe. What a great what a great way to work for your money and plan a wonderful trip. I spent, I work, I've worked since I was probably 13, I think, when I got my first job. And one of those people that just, liked a lot of retail therapy, I guess. <laughs> and, and also totally enjoyed experiences. So I used to go out, I grew up in New York, very close to New York City. And as soon as I could, I would go, go out and enjoy all the fun that New York has to offer. And so that was mostly what I worked for. I would like work for the weekend, <laughs> work for that time out. But I, I wish I would have had a little more forethought to uh, work for a lovely trip like that. Let's see. Stargazer was in college then, smart. Yep, Stargazer was 14 when she had their first job. I know, I've been working a long time. It's kind of wild. Where is this bead hole? I do kind of wish I had some red, little red beads, but maybe I'll have to be so I don't know if this is gonna feel too big. Maybe I'll cut one of these and see how they feel. Hey, Donna. This party just getting started. Now we've been, <laughs> thank you for joining us. We've been having a nice time checking out the Parisian Couture Kit and watching me struggle with these itty bitty three millimeter beads. I think I like that one better than this one.
and I feel like I need to move it down lower. <sighs> like right there. Stargazer is now retired and was a fashion designer. Awesome. That's fantastic. I went, I don't know if you've heard of it, but I went to the Fashion Institute of Technology. That was my college that I went to in New York City. So lots of fashion designers. I went for the graphic design program. So I wasn't in the fashion side of things, but ton, I was surrounded by tons of fashion designers or fashion merchandising students. It was a really lovely experience. Oh, Donna just got her kit. Yay. Yeah, we were doing a little kit sound off before. Like, who's got their kit? Who just got it in the mail? <laughs> who's got the next kit, the rainbow kit? That's a great idea, a pearl reamer. That would be helpful. Mostly it's that my hands are very slippery. And so when I have itty bitty beads like these pearls, they just want to slide away. That's probably enough. And then maybe I'll add a couple of pearls at the end here. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. I kind of wanted it to feel very um, simplistic and not too overdone, I guess, for this design. For, for some reason, that's just what's coming through. Oh, you did. Stargazer said she had a full scholarship to FIT, but got married instead. Well, I'm glad you eventually did go on to become a fashion designer. It was meant to be. Even if it wasn't at the same, at the same school. I keep getting things in the mail from them, actually. I have to like, um, I guess if you're like alumni, they want some information and I haven't, uh, I haven't responded yet. So I need to do that. I found it to be really, a, it was a fantastic school. Really, really cool environment. Also really stressful. It was also so, um, you know, people don't, think about, I think about my art as such a therapeutic and wonderful part of my life. But when you're actually going to school for it, man, it could be pretty stressful and very um, competitive, very competitive. <laughs> oh, Cynthia became an art teacher. That's lovely. Maybe so. What what grade did you teach, Cynthia? Or do you teach right now too? Um, I think that would be such a such a nice way to have, be around kids who are expressing their creativity. All right. Now I'm going to move these beads into the center where I want to cut my strand a little bit more. so that I can cut the other side. You are just so full of ideas, Pipea, saying, you know the plastic rubbery back that you use for earrings? I use them to keep the beads from falling off the strand and easy to move and remove around. That's a great idea. 
I usually use bead stoppers on the end. I don't really have to use them with these because these beads are so small. They're just sort of staying there in this particular design. Um, but I usually use bead stoppers and they're one of my favorite tools because before bead stoppers, I really dropped beads. Michelle says, my husband has an art degree in drawing and painting. Oh, I love hearing that. So many, so many creatives among us. We are all creative though, right? I mean, I totally believe that we are, every one of us is put here. We're just to be creative. It's just innate in human, human nature. We just all express it in different ways. And many of us express it in more than one way. Cynthia says elementary for 40 years. She's now retired. Oh, elementary school kids are the best. I used to go in, we had a program at my kids' um, schools, I think they do that other, lots of other schools too. It's called Art Masterpiece. And I would go in and uh, show them pictures of classic artworks and they would, we'd have a little discussion about them. It was always so much fun. And then I, we did a lot of auction, you know, schools do like auction art. And I would always come into the classroom for that. and help the kids with their, their classes auction art. And let's see, do I have any more pearls floating around here? I have one over here. And kids are just so stinking cute in elementary when they're creating. Stargazer says she was lucky they had it as a program in her high school and then went on to Miami Dade College in their fashion program. Yeah, that's really cool and rare, I bet. I don't think too many high schools have a fashion program. I'm going to take one off this side and put it over here. Oh, I love art history. Donna says, I took art history in college and totally love that class. Yeah, that was one of my favorite classes in college too. So interesting. I was not a very good history student in general. History was not a class I was good at. I've never had a really great memory for facts, dates, and things like that. So like social studies and history were always kind of tough for me. But art history, oh my gosh, I totally love that class. Oh, I did leave off a black bead. You're right. I left it off right there. All right, let's do that. Let's fix that before we go any further. Thank you, Janine and Chris. <laughs> a few of you <laughs> sharing. See what happens when I get chatting? Thank you. School teachers are cool. Yeah, I respect them too. They, they have their work cut out for them. That's for sure. They make such a difference though. I mean, they really, such a huge difference in the lives of our children. Studio art and art history. <laughs> yeah, my oldest is, um, he loves history. He just always really took to that subject. I just always felt, I feel like you have to remember so many things and um, even to this day, I have a hard time with like time, 
with time recognition, like how long ago something was and compared to something else and um, just timelines in general. Like I'm always way off. I joke, my husband's got a really great memory for all that stuff. And so he's my memory. Like there's things I think I've been to that I haven't been to. There's things I went to that I don't remember going to. And <laughs> so I always looked at him and I was like, was I there? <laughs> Did we do that? <laughs> like, I don't know. Time just has a very strange uh, thing in my head. It just doesn't, doesn't compute <laughs> sometimes. So this is what I'm thinking. Something like that. And I think I'll just add a crimp and see what that looks like. Not crimp it down yet, but just kind of add it and see how it looks. Oh, quite a few of you are saying the same thing. Becky says, never good at remembering what I read, and I'm still not good at it. Yeah, I mean, there are times I'll read something quite a few times before I'm like, wait, what was that paragraph? <laughs> wait, let me read that again. <laughs> and Stargazer has a hard time with the timelines too. Yeah, there's maybe there's something to that. I don't know. There's just like a weird, weird thing in my head with timelines. <laughs> Donna says, now if you ask me dates, she'll be stumped, but she does have ancient Roman glass beads that are 2000 years old, but I can't give you a specific date. <laughs> so you know, you know that they're 2000 years old, but you can't quite pinpoint the date of that, right? So I'm gonna put a crimp on either side here. And then what am I gonna do? I'm gonna pull up both sides. And here, before I crimp, I'm gonna kind of decide if I want this one to be longer, and I believe I do. And let's put me back in the frame. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some feed stoppers. And that should help me make sure I've got my strands where I want them. So before we crimp anything, I can use my bead stoppers to help me work on where I want stuff to be. And I don't even feel like, do I have that same number? I've got more on this side, don't I? I gotta take one off. Um, I don't even feel like I have to crimp anything here by the pearls because they're pretty, because they're so small and they're sitting kind of tightly on the wire. I don't think they're gonna really move around much. So I need to pull that out of the crimp and take off one of these. and then go back into that crimp. And I just wanna try and figure out how much of that do I want to show or do I want none of it to show?
So, I mean, you could go real close and have it be very, very kind of next to each other or pull this one down a little bit longer. Maybe that's kind of cute, just slightly. Chris says none, so no wire showing here. Try and get it a little more close together so that it looks like two. Cute, all right, so let's push that crimp down. I'm gonna put this bead stopper here for a second. And then push that crimp down, put that bead stopper there. That does look pretty cute, doesn't it? Really cute. Let's see if it lays okay when I lift it up. I was afraid it might be a little too close. I think if I take a bead off of this short, like make this strand a little bit shorter, Well, when you have it on a neck, it's going to go out a little bit. Donna saying, yes, exclamation point. Is that to making this one just a little bit small, shorter and adding the bead there instead? <laughs> Sometimes I don't know what you're saying yes to because there's a delay. <laughs> It is pretty cute. Yes, all right. So let's do that. Let's take off. Let's take off two beads on that top strand and add one on each side. You know, this can be a little finicky, this part, trying to get the layout right, but it's important. So you wanna, you wanna spend a little time here making sure before you crimp that you're happy with how everything's laying. All right, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna crimp my first crimp here. So I'm gonna use my magical crimping pliers. And what that will do is take my crimp tube and turn it into a round bead. I'm gonna make sure my wires are sitting parallel to one another so that this lays nice and straight. And I also, lastly, oh, let's make sure they're actually in the right direction. There we go. Just gonna leave a little bit of space there so that it's got some wiggle room. Then I'll place that crimp right inside of my crimping plier. You can even make adjustments at this point before you crimp down if you wanted to. And then you give it a squeeze, make your ravioli, which is looks like four pinched corners Place it back into your tool at a 90 degree angle from where you crimped it the first time. And then I'm going to go around a few more times. Twist it. And what it does is it makes it kind of an oval, a rounded oval. And now we can play with the other side. 
And here I'll probably loosen things up a little bit just because I can feel it's getting a little bit tight. And you want it to lay nice. and make sure not to loosen up too much. That one's actually got too much slack, so we want to pull that a little bit tighter. And that looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and crimp on this side. Give it a good squeeze. Turn it 90 degrees, squeeze again, and then go around. And now you have two choices. You can either cut one of these free and just let it be one strand, or you can twist these if you want to keep the two, or you can even just leave the two. So if you twist it, it'll just give it a little bit extra Kind of a nice way to make sure that um, even though I do use one strand a lot for necklaces and I was thinking I was going to do that with this but you'll have a bigger what's the word I'm looking for you'll have more color because you'll have like a, a thicker diameter going versus just the single one but I, you know what I might do the single because looking at this, I really like the simplicity of it. And I think I want it to just be single. And since I have a lot of wire, I'm not going to toss this wire. Like this is a good um, amount of wire here to hold on to. You could definitely make, sorry, definitely make a bracelet or something with this. So if I cut this away, uh, always hold on to it. Get a little baggy and hold your excess wire in there because there's a lot to work with still. So using my flush cutters, I'm just going to cut away one strand on each side. And I've got my flush cutter with the flat side going right up to the crimp. And be careful not to cut the other wire so that you still have one. And then lastly, I'm just going to add my clasp at the back and figure out what size I want to, length I want to make it. Probably make it kind of short. I'm thinking um, like 18 inches or maybe even 16 inches. Very sweet, right? Let's see where this will go. I have a necklace on right now, but I'll just kind of hold it up and see. Yeah, like nice and short. Would give it, well, I'm crooked as usual. <laughs> crooked as usual. <laughs> you see what I'm saying there though. <laughs> Pretty. Look at that. I think that turned out really sweet. Yeah, short necklaces are in, aren't they? And it'll be nice to have um, a longer necklace that you can layer with it. Maybe even do something else, a separate strand with the Eiffel Tower, and then you can layer them and have this one be a little bit longer if you want more going on or just wear the shorter one if you want the short one going on. Cute. I'll take a picture of this and share it, share it in the VIB studio. Oh, Donna says she can't wear short necklaces. I still think it would be cute even if it fell a little bit lower. Um, even if it was here, 
I think it would still work out really well. You may even want, you can add beads up the side if you wanted to, if you're making it longer and you didn't want so much of the wire showing. Um, but I have, I mean, I have necklaces that are really long that's just soft flex wire and just has beads at the bottom. So you really can leave a lot of wire showing and it's totally okay and uh, it's comfortable to wear. And the pop of red makes it look really pretty. This is your sister's jam. Good. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Chris says, Joker looks great. Came out awesome. Janine says, very nice. Lovely. Oh, hi. Nice to see you, Amber. Gal says, I like how this design turned out. Great job. Thank you. Short and sweet. Yes. Thank you, guys. I know I was like... I I have an idea for this too, these, but you know, we always have more ideas, right? That's what the fun thing about creativity. The more you do, the more ideas come to you. <laughs> so, so this was the Softlex Company Mystery Design Kit, the Parisian Couture. We are sold out of the full kit, but you can still get the bead mix and you can get the um, trios. It won't have the same beads I used today because I used mostly the beads from the kit. Um, but you can always use this style of tutorial with different beads and a different pendant and still kind of uh, get a similar effect, right? We have our newest kit out, Love is Love, Rainbow Madness design kit. If you spend $55 or more, you will get the bead mix free uh, with your order. It'll automatically get added into your shopping cart. And when I looked for my video, we had about 30 of those bead mixes left. So once those are gone, they're gone. There is no Jesse James beads bead mix in the Love is Love design kit this month. So that's why you're getting it for free with your order over $55 so that it helps complement what's already in there um, that we put together separately. And we also have the Love is Love bead strand that goes along with it too. That's really exciting. Uh, Sarah will be live on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time for one of her new videos. And then both of us will be live on, in the Beads and Blooms event on Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. So for those of you that are um, in that event, we look forward to seeing you there. And yeah, have a great week. It was lovely chatting with you today. I had a really nice time. Thanks for being here. And I look forward to seeing you next Monday uh, at 1 p.m. Pacific time for our next tutorial, Free Spirit Beating Monday. Thanks, everybody. See you soon. Oh, I should mention, I'm gonna send a picture of this in the VIB studio over on Facebook. And we post it on our blog on Friday and it goes into our email on Saturday. So if you wanna see the final designs, those are usually where you get to go see our final designs. All right, <laughs> thanks again. See you soon, bye.